The Johnson Wax Program with Brock Morton P. Gildersleeve. <laughs> of Johnson's Car New and the whole family of Johnson Protective Surface Products present for your enjoyment The Great Gildersleeve, written by Len Levinson. Your new summer radio show brought to you each Tuesday night at this time. <laughs> we'll hear all about The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Right now, here's a question for you quiz lovers. What is it that does two things at the same time? You're right, it's Johnson's Car New that both cleans and wax polishes your car at one and the same time in one easy operation. Now, if you drive a dull and dirty car around town, it's just because you haven't heard about Car New. You don't know how easy it is to give your car that showroom shine your family will admire so much. My suggestion to you for today is just this. Tie a string around your finger if necessary to remember to stop in at your regular wax dealer, auto supply store, or service station and buy yourself a can of Johnson's Car New. Don't put it off. The cost is very low and the results are amazing. You'll agree with thousands of other enthusiastic car owners that your car looks like new when you use Car New. And now for the adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Wistful Vista, lady. Oh. Now, you won't get me right past Summerfield, will you? Lady, we don't reach Summerfield till tomorrow, and we can't go past it because it's the end of the line. Yes, yes, you told me all that before. You say this is Wistful... Oh, Wistful Vista, where Sibyl McGee and Molly live? Yes. Oh, my. Do you think I'll be able to see them from the train window? No, lady, the McGees are on their vacation. Oh. But there's Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, their next-door neighbor out there. Where? Where? That portly gent with the mustache on the platform, the one making a speech to his employees. How do you know they're his employees? Because every time he takes a trip, he gives the help at the factory an hour off to come down to the station and wave goodbye. Well, so that's Mr. Gilsley. Well, I never thought... I can't tell you how touched I am to see all the employees of the Gildersleeve Girdle Works down here at the station to bid me goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's very... Uh, uh, by the way, is there anyone left at the plant? Well, uh, uh, no, T.P. Well, what if some orders come in? Who's taking the phone call? Uh, Mert. Oh, Mert, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, as I was saying, while I'm away, I expect every one of you to uphold Gildersleeve girdles to the best of your ability. <laughs> and don't forget our motto. If you want the best of corsets, of course it's Gildersleeve. Very good, very good. Just remember... Put everything you've got into those girdles. Will you do that? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. And though it's necessary for me to go away and attend to other enterprises, the one thing closest to my heart is the Gilded Sleeve Girdle. I want you all to carry on as if I was right here. And now I, I know I can count on each and every one of you to do your duty till the day I return. How long will you be gone, T.P.? At least three days and maybe till the end of the week. Before you go, T.P., the Gildersleeve Girdle Workers Guild wishes to present you with this handsome leather briefcase as a token of our esteem for you. I, I don't know what to say. Except, by George, when I get back, I'm going to call in my lawyers and draw up a profit sharing plan so that eventually all you folks are going to get the work. Uh, I mean, I'm going to give you the work. What I mean to say is... Uh, yes, yeah, all aboard? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Out of my way, everybody. Where am I back? On the train, T.P. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I forgot to buy a ticket. Where do I buy a ticket? On the train, T.P. Oh, yes. Uh, let go of me, boys. Where are you pushing me? On, On the, the train, train T.P. Yeah. Goodbye, Goodbye, children. Ticket, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sorry I haven't any berths left. Uh, couldn't you squeeze me in somewhere? I'll try, though it'll probably be a tight squeeze. (laughs) (laughs) 
Tight squeeze, eh? Side splitting, isn't it? <laughs> Going to be in Summerfield long? Oh, no, Conductor, just three or four days. I'm taking over the administration of my brother-in-law's estate. Yes. Oh, that's so? Yes, they own an automobile agency that hasn't been doing so well lately, and I'm going to set it to right. Don't you think uh, maybe you're biting off more than you can chew? Not at all. Oh, that reminds me. It's dinner time. Where, which way is the diner? Why, an experienced old traveler like you should know where the diner is. Why, of course. No matter where you are, the diner's always at the other end of the train. <laughs> See you later, conductor. <laughs> Crowded in here. I smiled. <laughs> Is it all right, Angel? I said if this gentleman doesn't mind reading his paper on his own side of the table. Here, excuse me, sir. Do you mind? Yes, I do. I'm particular whom I eat with. <laughs> you are, eh? Well, I'm not. I'm hungry. <laughs> Waiter, bring me a steak. Nice, juicy, double tenderloin, rare. Waiter. Where's my milk toast? I ordered it 15 minutes ago. Yeah, I'm sorry, but milk toast takes time, you know. Uh, and waiter, I want a big heaping plate of French fries. Yeah, and French fries, yeah. And some uh, pickles. And a cup of strong coffee with lots of cream. Yeah, coffee both. And I'll get it right away. Yeah. And bring me my milk toast made with gluten bread, remember? <laughs> gluten bread. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, some hot biscuits and a lot of butter and a little pot of jam. Gluten bread toasted and a cup of hot water. Yeah. And then, uh, apple pie a la mode, waiter. Yes. Pie a la mode. Yeah, with cheese. Yeah, with cheese. Yeah. I can't stand this. Listening to you is giving me heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, uh, Waiter, don't forget mustard, beef steak sauce, ketchup, chutney, piccalilli, and a soda quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, of course, it's none of my business, mister. Then don't stick your nose in it. Yes. <laughs> Well, all right, if that's the way you feel. I was just going to tell you you're getting your paper in the butter plate. Don't make any difference. I don't use butter. <laughs> you don't, eh? I guess it's because butter wouldn't melt in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what I was going to say was... Never mind. Okay, I won't say it then. But that butter from your paper's all over your sleeve now. I don't care. What? Oh, of all the messes. Uh, 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 uh. Water won't take it out. It only spreads the grease. <laughs> you see, what did I tell you? <laughs> I'll thank you to mind your own business. Well, that's fine, thanks for telling you on what side your sleeve is buttered. <laughs> you leave my sleeve out of this. Well, leave your sleeve out of the butter, then. <laughs> Furthermore, what's the idea of jumping down my throat? What do you expect addressing a perfect stranger? You're far from perfect, stranger. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to make a career out of ignoring you. That shoots me fine. Uh, oh, oh, that's my foot you stepped on, you big buffalo. Excuse me, I always put on the brakes when we go downhill. Oh, <laughs> I never heard it on. Ah, here comes my food. That's pretty snappy service, waiter. Yes, sir. Well, where's my milk toast? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir, but the chef, he's all out of glutton bread, sir. Yes. <laughs> he wants to know would uh, pumpernickel do just as well. No, Pumpernickel wouldn't do just as well. What's the idea of keeping me waiting all this time while you serve this lump of lard the minute he sits down? Oh, no, look here, mister. I don't want to look here. I'm sick of the sight of you. Oh, the idea. An overstuffed ox like you. Guttling and gobbling and gorging yourself like an ostrich. I got a bad case of indigestion already just from looking at you. Why, you dyspeptic little dodo. Just because you're mean to your stomach and your stomach talks back to you, you bellyache. Excuse the expression. <laughs> you can't stand the sight of a healthy man sitting down to a hearty meal. You're not suffering from indigestion. You're just green with Epicurean envy. I won't sit here. Promise, sir. Now what? You'll buy carbonate of soda. Oh, take it away. Take it away. I need something stronger than that now. I got the pills right here in my briefcase. Just a second there. What are you doing with my briefcase? Your briefcase? This is mine. It is not. My employees gave it to me just this afternoon. Here, give it to me. Take your fat paws off of my briefcase before I... Before you what, you dried up little crab apple? <laughs> and now, wait a minute, gentlemen. Please. Let go of my briefcase. I will not. It's mine. If you don't let go of this briefcase, I will... Oh, wait, Matt. Did you see anything of my briefcase? I left it... Oh, there it is. Thank you so much, gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. 
Gildersleeve, I've located a berth for you at last. Oh, that's fine. I was getting tired of sitting around here in my pajamas. Where is it? It's upper nine in the next car. Upper nine? Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. The last time I was in an upper berth was, let me see, uh, 50 pounds ago. <laughs> Well, that's the only thing I've got, Mr. Gildersleeve. The porter's making it up for you now. All right, conductor. I'll have to make the best of it. Good night, and thanks. I do hope that porter gives me a wide berth. Oop. It's too dark in here. Uh, porter! Porter! Quiet! Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, porter. Yes, sir? Have you got up for nine ready? Yes, sir, but I didn't anticipate no gentleman to set ample proposals. Yes, well, I guess I'd better take a ladder. Yes, I'd better take two. They're small. Yes. <laughs> All right, come on. Here we are, right up there. Say, that looks kind of high. You hold these ladders steady, Porter. Remember, if they tip, I won't. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. Now be careful, Mister. Yeah. Train's coming to a sharp curve pretty soon. When? Then. Oh. Hold on, Mister. The ladder slide. I can't hold on. I'm coming down. Look out below. Oh. oh. What hit me? Oh, my back. Here, Mister. Let me help you up. I don't want to get up. I want to sleep. Not you, Mister. The man in the upper. He now in the lower. I'm all right. I think I can make it now. Get off of my poor stomach. What? Who is it? Oh, it's you. What are you doing sneaking into my berth? I'm not sneaking in. I'm not sneaking. I'm trying to climb into bed. I'm your upstairs neighbor. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I hope that swinging shelf snaps shut on you. Yeah? Well, if it's going to swing, I'll see that it swings your way. And if I land on you, brother, you'll spend the rest of the night sleeping in the road bed. Quiet. Let me go to sleep. Okay, Grandpa. Unpleasant dreams. <laughs> All right, Porter, give me a leg up again, will you? <clears throat> Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-three. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-five. Oh, good Godfrey. Two o'clock already. And still not a wink of sleep. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-six. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-seven. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-eight. Yeah. What's the use? There was only some way of stopping that buzzsaw down there. Oh. Oh, I can't stand it any longer. Where's that porter? I've been ringing for a half an hour. Could you call me, sir? Uh, yes, yes. Would you mind getting me a cup of ice water? I can't sleep. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the ice water. You needn't wait. <laughs> hey, good night. Oh, good night, sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, if I can hold the cup in this hand and open the lower curtain with the... Ah, uh, I've got it. <laughs> steady, steady now, Gildas Lee. Ready. <laughs> Aim. <laughs> oh, what was that? Porter! Order! <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is it, sir? Shut this window. It's raining right in on my face. <laughs> Quiet! Can a man get any rest around here? Ah, <laughs> uh, good morning, Porter. Had a wonderful sleep. How long before we pull into Summerfield? In about five minutes, sir. You want me to brush y'all? No, I'll walk down the steps like the rest of the passengers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, by the way, Porter, you've given me such good service. Here's an order for a Gildersleeve girdle for your wife. Oh, thank you, sir. I happen to be a spinster at the moment. Yes, you. <laughs> but if it's, if, if it's all right with you, I'll put it in my hope chair. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfectly all right. Well, sorry. well, hello there, Gildersleeve. Why, Harlow Wilcox. What are you doing on this train? Oh, starting on my vacation. You are, huh? Aren't you working this summer? Oh, no, I'm off till the fall. Well. The Johnson Wax people said car news sales are going so well, there's no reason for me to hang around. What do you mean? Well, for the past 39 weeks, I've told everybody all about Johnson's car news. I've described how easy it is to use and how effective it is in giving your buggy that new car finish. And as a result, folks don't need to be reminded all the time. They don't, eh? Uh... No, they'll remember to go to their dealers the minute they run out of car new, because they know that it not only cleans the finish of your car, but also protects it and makes it look like new. Isn't that so? Huh? Well, who am I to say no? <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, I don't have a thing to worry about this summer. I'm just going to take it easy. Just as easy as it is to apply car new. By the way, where are you going, Doc Morton? Well, I'm going to visit my niece and nephew in Summerfield, Hollow. I haven't seen them for, oh, four or five years. They've been away at school. Well, they must be pretty big now. Oh, yes. Evelyn's about uh, 19 or 20, and Leroy is 12, I think. Uh, you know, I ought to have a lot of fun with those kids. Yes, and uh, vice versa, Doc Morton. Yes. Next stop, Summerfield. Summerfield. Hey, lady, wake up. Wake up. This is Summerfield. <laughs> It isn't a foundry, Leroy. Really, it's a... Oh, never mind. It's nothing that concerns little boy. Uh, I'm sure that Uncle Throckmorton will prefer to have you call him Uncle Throckmorton. So how about me making it Uncle Throcky? Fred, how about that? I don't think that will be very respectful, Leroy. And Uncle Gildy? That's even worse. What's the matter with Throckmorton? Oh, shucks. You can't go around calling a big, tough guy who runs a steel foundry Throckmorton. <laughs> Why, it's positively derogatory. It's derogatory. Is that true? Leroy, who told you Uncle Throckmorton was in the steel business? Yeah, you thought you were so smart, always trying to hide Uncle's business from me. What's wrong with having a steel mill? A steel mill? Sure, I know all about it. I want to hold of one of his letterheads. The Gildersleeve Girder Company. <laughs> Company. See, he should be here by now, shouldn't he, Ev? Oh, now, don't you worry, Leroy. Just as soon as the train arrives, Mr. Wells will bring him here for breakfast. Yeah, I want to go down to the station, too. Oh, yeah, but Ted has to discuss all the legal details with Uncle Throckmorton before we go to court. Say, uh, you're getting pretty darn stuck on that Ted guy, aren't you? Why, Leroy Forrester, I am not. Ted Wills is, is nearly our lawyer. He is not. Williamson, Williams, Willies, and Wills are our lawyers, and Ted's nothing but the tail end. <laughs> Well, he's young, yes. He just gives him time. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, say, how's if I should call him Uncle Morton? Call who? Oh, oh, Uncle Throckmorton. Well, I don't think he'd object to that. Wait, I can do better than that. How's it? Uncle Mort. Who's that? Uncle Mort. I'll answer it. Well, 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 I'll bet this is little Leroy. Leroy, this is your uncle. Hi, Uncle Mort. Yeah, hi, who? You. <laughs> Uncle Mort. You don't mind if I call you Uncle Mort, do you, Uncle Mort? <laughs> Not at all. Go right ahead. Uncle Mort, eh? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and this is Evelyn, Mr. Gildersleeve. Evelyn, eh? Uh, come here, my dear. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> my, how you've grown. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Jock Morton. Yeah. <laughs> here, let me take your hat and coat. <laughs> Will you have some breakfast? Uh, no, thanks. I've already had mine on the... Well, I'll have a cup of coffee. <laughs> sit right here, Uncle. Ted, you sit over there. Oh, thanks. My, this looks good. <laughs> well, did you make this coffee yourself, Evelyn? Yes, I did. Hey, Uncle, will you take me back to Whistful Vista with you and let me work in your factory? What? Well, I didn't think you'd be interested in that sort of thing. But, Leroy... Here I am, Uncle Moore. That must be so well. I bet you make the support for a lot of big projects there. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> we, uh, 
<laughs> we don't turn out anything much in the way of supporters. <laughs> we sort of confine ourselves to uh, foundations. <laughs> I'd like to go along sometime when you install some of those foundations. I don't have this. <laughs> what, what do you think I am? Oh, the place excuse me, Roy, Uncle Marty. He, he's been like that ever since he found out you owned the Gildersleeve Girder Company. What? The Gildersleeve Girder? Oh! Oh, yes. Yes, I see it all. a bright boy. Yes. Yes. Gee, Uncle... Um, you don't know how small it is for me to meet a real he-man and a real he-man business. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is? Sure. <laughs> All I hear around this house is dresses and hats and hairdos and women's stuff. Oh. But it's going to be different with you around. Uh, is it? <laughs> small, isn't it? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> Say, hey, do you ever have to slug it out with any of them tough steel workers of yours? Uh, no, no, I never do. <laughs> You know, huh? Oh, well, of course. Uh, there have been times when I've had to put more uh, snap into their work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And once, once I was so angry, Leroy, that I picked up a badly made uh, foundation and bounced it right off the foreman's head. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Oh, boy, where do I tell the kids at school about that? Now, Leroy, you let your uncle eat his breakfast. Has him tell us something more? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, Oh, uh, speaking of toast reminds me of gluten toast. <laughs> and boy, does that remind me. That reminds me of an amusing incident on the train last night. Uh, you'll enjoy this, Leroy. <laughs> when I went into the diner, the only unoccupied chair was at a table with a sour little crab who had his newspaper spread out. that little when the ice water hit him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you finish now, Mr. Gildersleeve, it's time to leave for court. Yes, I'm through, Ted. Uh, it was a fine breakfast, Evelyn. You're going to make some lucky man a wonderful uh, cook. Hey, uh, Ted. Uh, <laughs> oh, Uncle Mike. Hey, come on, kid. Let's trot over to the courthouse. This won't take long. Once the judge sees who he's dealing with, I'll be appointed administrator faster than you can say habeas corpus. <laughs> I can say is we run things better than this in Whistle Vista. Eleven o'clock and the probate judge hasn't even shown up yet. Oh, Judge Hooker's usually very prompt. Yeah, the trouble with some of these judges is they think they're little tin gods. Take those black robes away from them, what have you got? Bow legs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hot one, Uncle Moore. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Everyone rise, please. Well, I'm glad he's here. Now we'll get this thing over with quick. Here, court, the top 25, the Honorable Henry H. Hooker, Judge of Tiding Sound. Please sit it. Sit down, Uncle Moore. Huh? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Who's that man sitting in the judge's chair? Well, that's Judge Hooker. Judge Hooker? That's the man in the lower berth. <laughs> hey, Rick. I'll... That's him, all right. <laughs> this is a plot for appointment as administrator of the state of A. Parker. Well, that's us. Come on, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh... I'm not feeling very well, Ted. Uh, couldn't we postpone this over to another judge? Oh, come on, Uncle Mort. Remember what you said. This guy will be a pushover. A yeah, pushover, yeah, yeah. Now, come on, come on. Step up. Don't dawdle. I haven't got all day. Make a snappy throat. The judge is pretty short-tempered this morning. He didn't get any sleep last night. Oh, good God, Fred. <laughs> Your Honor, with your permission, I'll put Mr. Gildersleeve on the stand and examine his qualifications for this position. Go ahead, Mr. Wills. Well, you witness that. You sound as well to tell the truth, the whole truth, not about to talk you? Yes, uh, I do. <laughs> well, do you, don't you? Speak up. I do. That voice is very familiar. Oh. <laughs> Turn around, mister. Oh, so it's you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hello, Judge. How are you this morning? <laughs> I'm loud. <laughs> Witness will confine himself to the matter at hand. Mr. Wills? Yes, Your Honor? I'll examine this man's qualifications, if you don't mind. Why don't, Your Honor? Yeah, but I do. Silence. Yes, sir. You're here to answer questions. Now then, Gildersleeve, if your name really is Gildersleeve, what do you do for a living? I make girdles, Your Honor. <laughs> Order in the court. Order in the court. And you, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Gildersleeve. One more attempt at cheap humor, 
I'll judge you in contempt. But it's true, Your Honor. I'm president of the Gildersleeve Girdle Company. Oh, Uncle Moore, tell him the truth. Yep. He doesn't make girdles, Judge. What does he do? Steal foundations. <laughs> I bet he would, too. <laughs> No more interruptions, my boy. Remember, this is courtroom. You realize who I am, of course. Sure, you're a bow-legged little tin guy. Uh, what? <laughs> no, Leroy. But you just said so yourself, Uncle Moore. Oh. oh, you did. Uh, just a little joke, Your Honor. You know how I kid. No offense, I hope. <laughs> it is an offense. Contempt of court. Just one more disrespectful remark, Mr. Gilda, whatever your name is, and oh, I'll... Don't do that, Judge. Uncle Mort will keep his opinions about you to himself, won't you, Uncle Mort? Yes, I know better now. Uh, I mean, I'll be careful, Your Honor. See as you do. I hope that by now you realize the gravity of the situation, Mr... Yeah, uh, Gildersleeve, I certainly do, Your Honor. I'm going to ask you a simple, straightforward question. I want a simple, straightforward answer. Go right ahead, Judge. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve. What business are you in? Well, I... Uh, uh, do I have to answer that? You do, and remember, you're under oath. Well, uh, that is, uh, Leroy, would you mind going out of the hall and get me some uh, ice water? One minute. Who's running this court, you or I? You better not get Uncle Mort mad, Judge. Last night he threw a whole bucket of water on a guy out of a berth under him. <laughs> and just, just because this guy was snoring. Oh, my God, here we go again. <laughs> he did, did he? <laughs> Uncle Mort. But, Judge Hooker, it's after five o'clock. Yeah. This poor man's been on the witness stand all day. All right. and... One more question, and I'll hand down my decision. Mr. Gildersleeve, what makes you think you have executive ability? Well, <laughs> I have a large staff of my own in three years of experience. I know the proper relationship between employer and employee. You bet, Your Honor. And if they don't do what Uncle Mort says, he just bucks them over the stone with a steel girder. Now, wait a minute, Leroy. <laughs> but, Uncle Mort, I'm just repeating everything you say. Yes, and everything I've said is being used against me. I can't go on. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wills. Our firm has checked and double-checked Mr. Gildersleeve's references. We're satisfied as to his qualifications. We therefore petition you to name him as the new administrator of the Forester Estate. Uh-huh. Mr. Wills, I have great respect for you and your associates. That is probably the only reason why I'm going to grant your petition. Hooray! However, in order to protect these children from their own misguided enthusiasm, I am going to require this Gildersleeve to report to me every single week. But, Your Honor... He must get an okay for every cent he spends. But, Judge... And I will require him to post a bond of $50,000 in cash. Now, see here, Hooker. <laughs> I will stand for this. I'll resign. Quiet. Gildas Leave, I never sent for you. You came here begging for this job. Now, just because I insist on it being administered with scrupulous honesty, you tried to back out of it. But, but it won't work. To quote from Brawby versus Union Buggy Corporation, Civil Court of Nebraska, you've made your bed and you can't lie out of it. But my business in Whistle Vista demands... You that... mean your girdle business? <laughs> You will remain here and make this estate pay or go to jail for contempt. But, but I am... Watch adjourn. I'll kill that old goat. <laughs> Ted, we've got to do something about this. Do you realize that a $50,000 bond would not only take every cent of my ready cash, but also means the mergers are my gordle works? <laughs> oh, gee, I, I'm... I'm sorry about how the whole... <laughs> I'm sorry about how the whole thing went, Mr. Gilder. He's got me awfully nervous. Maybe if we went into the judge's chambers, we could persuade him to lower the bond, Uncle Moore. Sure, just let me talk to him. Young man, you've talked enough for one day. How about it, Ted? Well, it won't hurt to try. Come on. Yes. Come in. Uh, excuse me, Judge Hooker. You remember me, don't you? <laughs> Uh, I thought perhaps maybe we could possibly get that little uh, cash bond uh, reduced. I don't see why I should waste it. Well, I, I've been thinking, Your Honor. If, if you spoke to somebody who'd known me for a long time, they might convince you that I'm not such a bad fella. <laughs> oh, that would be fine, Uncle Moore. 
Who could the judge talk to? Well, uh, the president of the Whistle Vista Chamber of Commerce, Evelyn. He's my next door neighbor, too. A fellow named Silver McGee. We can call him long distance. <laughs> I see, Mr. McGee. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you put me straight on that. Yeah, see, I knew my pal would set me in right. That's a very good point. I wouldn't have missed this chat for the world. Leroy, I want you to meet McGee one of these days. There's one of nature's noblemen. Oh, yes. This conversation will influence my decision a lot, Mr. McGee. Ah, uh, thank goodness. I guess you've made my mind up for me, uh, Tipper. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Hold the phone a second. I'll tell him. Gildersleeve. Uh, yes, Judge? Gildersleeve, I've decided to rescind that $50,000 bond. Uh, I knew that would happen if you spoke to my little chum. Yes. After talking to McGee, I'm going to make that bond $100,000. What? Give me that telephone. Hello? Hello? You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. You know, one thing that's welcome any time is a new product or a new idea that will save work. That's just as true in the home as it is in industry. Look how successful Johnson's self-polishing glow coat is. Because it has saved housewives millions of hours of work in taking care of their floors. And just as much of a work saver for you men is Johnson's sensational new auto polish, Car New. Car New does two jobs at once. Both cleans and wax polishes your car in one easy operation. Formerly, to do these jobs cost real money or several hours of hard work. Now, with Johnson's Car New, many car owners tell us they do both jobs in an hour. Imagine cleaning and wax polishing your car in one hour. Oh, if your car is very dirty, it may take you a little more, but you'll still say Car New is a miracle worker. As a matter of fact, thousands of the country's leading service stations are now using Car New for polishing customers' cars. There's only one way to find out how easy Car New is to use, what a beautiful showroom shine it gives your car. Try it yourself. Get a can tomorrow from your regular wax dealer, auto supply store, or service station. Remember, your car looks like new when you use Car New. Mort, what are you going to do now? By George, I'm going to show that judge I can run that estate, or my name won't be Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. You bet it won't, Uncle Mort. You won't even have a name. Yeah, I'll just have a number. Good night. Speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for the home and for industry, inviting you to be with us next Tuesday night to hear the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.